What's going on guys? Figured I'd come over to the messy workbench today and make what should be a relatively quick video on my rise and fall indicator fixture. I uh, had an individual DM me on Instagram the other day and was curious if I could give a little bit more information on my fixture uh, that I built quite some time ago. Uh, I believe he saw this in my uh, YouTube slip joint build series. Uh, I probably showed how to use that uh, maybe in one of the videos. And uh, sounds like he's getting into some slip joint building, wants to build something similar. So I uh, figured I'd make a relatively quick video here and uh, kind of give a couple of rough dimensions and some tips and tricks uh, that might help him build his. So uh, first thing I'll say about this, there's really nothing super critical about these as far as dimensions or assembly. Uh, it's really just a very basic fixture uh, with one thing in mind here. Uh, and that's just to kind of hold everything in place while you indicate the top of your back spring here. And uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with these, uh, what they're used for or how to use them, uh, their main reason for existing, again, is really just to indicate the position of your back spring. And usually it's for three positions. Uh, that's going to be open, half open, or maybe half closed uh, if you're a pessimist. And then uh, your full closed position. And the goal here is to get that to always read at the same spot, uh, you know, usually zero uh, if you're a normal individual. So uh, the reason you want to do that is that when your knife is assembled, you want this back spring to be flush uh, in all three of those positions. Or if you're not making a half stop, uh, at least the open and closed position. And uh, just to kind of give a little better example here, this is an old case swell end jack. Uh, one of my favorite patterns by them. I really wish uh, they'd come back out with these, uh, make some more modern versions. Uh, I'm not sure why they stopped this pattern, but uh, I don't think it's been made for some time now. But uh, just to give you an example here, uh, when this is closed, you can see if I focus... Uh, that everything's relatively flush. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect on a production folder. I can catch my thumb, uh, my thumbnail on there in a couple spots. But uh, you can kind of get the idea. It's supposed to be uh, relatively flush, everything somewhat the same. Then when you open it at the half stop, uh, at least on a custom piece or some really well done production folders, uh, you'll see that's generally pretty flush as well. Uh, this one's obviously not. It sticks up probably about, I'd say, 20 thousandths or so. Uh, but then at the open position, uh, you're kind of back to the original uh, somewhat flush construction there. Now, how custom makers do that uh, without you know, going crazy and putting it together, taking it apart a thousand times and making real small adjustments. Uh, you can get there uh, a little bit easier, a little bit more quickly with a rise and fall indicator, uh, which will kind of simulate a constructed sip, uh, slip joint. And uh, again, let you see where that back spring is going to end up when you're in those three positions. Now, I do my back springs just a little bit differently than a lot of makers. Uh, a lot of makers will kind of keep the back spring straight and then set the tension or kick it out at the very last uh, using the back pin. Uh, I don't really do it that way. Uh, you know, that's maybe a better way to do it. I do it, you know, a way that works maybe a, a little bit more consistently for me. So uh, these indicators don't really work usually uh, for me uh, in the closed position because in order to really get that uh, geometry or dimension uh, it's really got to be under tension. Now uh, USA Knife Maker I believe uh, does make or at least used to make one that had a little threaded rod or a thumb screw that you could push into the back of your slip joint spring uh, to give it that tension and uh, something like that would probably work uh, for this type of spring design or the way I do mine uh, but normally uh, as far as when I'm using them I kind of settle just for the open and the half stop and then uh, I can do other things to kind of approach my 
uh, final dimension there. Uh, depending on the spring, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we don't want to get into that uh, to complicate an otherwise simple video here. So uh, first things first, uh, this is just made out of scrap. Uh, I had some half inch micarta lying around. This is a quarter inch piece of a different micarta. Uh, I just kind of milled it out to inlay there and uh, to slide back and forth. And you know, really the only thing <clears throat> that you're really gonna be fixing on these are your pivot point and your center spring uh, pin. And uh, as far as where those are, whether it's in the middle of this or up at the top, uh, that's not really all that critical. Uh, as long as your indicator can ride on the top of your back spring, uh, those dimensions really aren't that uh, important. You know, this moves back and forth, so that'll take up any kind of difference as far as the length of my back spring. Uh, the main thing is just that you can get everything together uh, to where it's going to be, you know, nice and solid on your fixture. And then you can zero your indicator. Uh, you do want that to be solid as well. You don't want that slopping around on you, obviously. But uh, as long as you have two fixed points, one for your back spring center pin, one for your blade pivot, uh, that's really the most important thing. And then you want your indicator fixed in such a way uh, that it's going to be riding on the end of your back spring. And easiest way to do that is really just to line it right up with your blade pivot. Uh, you know, that's the way I, I built this one. Uh, it can be left or right you know, just a little bit and really not hurt anything. Uh, just as long as you're getting to the end portion of that back spring, uh, that's the main thing. So that you do kind of want in a fixed spot. Uh, the back spring, depending on length, you know, it can move back and forth. Uh, but again, as far as at what point on the sliding piece you want to drill those, uh, that's not super critical. You can see I've got a couple of different sizes here. Uh, for larger pins, smaller pins. Most of my pivots are eighth inch, so that's what I put here. Uh, you could easily probably fit a 332nd or a different size pin above or below that and still have a functional uh, gauge. But uh, just to give you some rough dimensions, again, not critical. You know, it's about seven inches long by about four and a half wide and uh, you know use whatever scrap you got around uh, one thing I did have to do because of how your indicator is built you know there is kind of a step here you do want that indicator pin to where it's going to center up on your spring material so you do kind of have to recess that in there a little bit If I got a Phillips screwdriver around here or not. Let's see. Go and take this out. And this is a cheap indicator I got on Amazon for probably 10, 15 bucks. You can see on this, I did have to shim it up just a little bit, uh, at least for this indicator. But I've just got it kind of counterboard there for the barrel. And then I did mill out just a little bit more or uh, more material there so it doesn't bind up. But uh, the idea is to get the point of that indicator right in line with where your back spring is going to lay on that. So uh, however you got to do that uh, should work just fine. Uh, and again, put your pivot point right at the end where your indicator is going to sweep that. And then these holes, a little bit less critical. Uh, this one does have adjustment. You know, you really don't need it to slide back and forth. If you're making the same kind of slip joint all day long, uh, just put it in the same spot every time. Or you can kind of drill around on your board as needed. But uh, this just makes it a little bit easier to adjust. And then if I need to fix it, I just use a spring clamp. So that video probably went a little longer than it needed to, but if you have any more questions, leave me a comment, send me another DM, I'll do what I can for you. But uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. So thanks for watching, guys.